y'all farmer dre back at it today it's another beautiful afternoon here on the farm we've been we've been planting strawberries all day here long out with the crew and uh we're getting close to halfway done and i just want to hop on here real quick and answer some questions i've been getting asked a lot on youtube and on instagram and if you guys don't follow me on instagram it's just farmer dre i'll put a link down in the description you guys can follow me i post up there uh of what i'm doing currently that day and anyways i'm gonna answer a bunch of questions and explain how this uh plastic culture strawberry system works a lot and more in depth about the science and everything behind that so you guys stay tuned for today's video if you guys haven't already go ahead hit that subscribe button like this video if you guys have any questions or comments leave them down below and uh, don't forget to hit that notification icon because I'm coming to you guys three days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And you guys stay tuned for today's video. So first thing is first, the system we're putting the strawberries on now, it's called plastic culture strawberries. And the definition of plastic culture is implementing plastic in agriculture. That's where the word comes from. And the reason we use a black plastic for the strawberries is because... It, first of all, it's weed suppression doesn't let allow any kind of weeds to grow through and affect our production of strawberry plants and The second thing that the plastic helps out is a soil temperature and since it is fall now and we're planting in the fall I'm gonna explain a little about that why are we planting this time of year and since it's fall now the soil temperatures are starting to um, you know cool down and next spring whenever the the plants come out of um, whenever they're ready to start blooming it the black plastic actually helps the soil warm up so we have a better crop and better production so the plastic is used for that and another thing the plastic is also used for in the strawberries in these windrows we made here is it it heals up the soil so if we do get a lot of rain that the plastic you know lets the the water drain so we don't have as many um, fungal diseases going on even though um we have to uh, spray a lot of fungicides for anthracnose and botrytis on the strawberries. I was talking to the man who bring us, brought us the plugs. His name is Bill McNitt from McNitt Growers. And I, I told him, look, man, I'm a first-time strawberry grower. I really don't know exactly what to spray. So I gave him our, uh, we have a Midwest uh, fruit spray guide that we use here on the farm. It's the, it's the apple of fruit production. That's all the, uh, it's, it's the Bible of fruit production, not the apple. What what am I thinking? Anyways, I just I just got done giving a farm tour, so that's why I'm so uh, <laughs> like this. Anyways, it's the Bible of fruit production. I would recommend every farmer or fruit farmer that, or any even even a backyard farmer who has fruit trees to get this uh, get this uh, book. Or it's a, there's a free PDF online. It's called the Midwest Fruit Spray Guide, and it has apples, peaches, cherries, plums, grapes, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries. And I gave Bill McNitt, the, the guy who brings us the plugs, and he went through there and highlighted what's good, what fungicides to use. And then I asked him, what is the most, what's the biggest pest in strawberries, uh, bug-wise, insect-wise? And he said, on strawberries, the system we're growing it on, is, there's not really that many bugs or insects that could affect the crop. It's mainly the anthracnose, the gray mold, and the, the botrytis that could just uh, completely uh, devastate your crop. That's kind of on the bugs and the insecticide stuff and the fungicide stuff. And one of the questions I get asked the most is why are we planting strawberries in the fall? It's September now and you know a lot of the home gardeners and the strawberry farmers they plant them in the springtime. And the reason we're planting strawberries in the fall, these are a June bearing variety. There's two different types of, of strawberries. There's a June bearing and the ever bearing. So the June bearing, they, um, they produce one time and that's the month of June. We're in southwest Missouri, southwest Missouri here. We're in zone 6B. So for us, it's a little earlier. Our strawberry season starts the first week of May and ends about the you know first, second week of June. And then the ever bearing is you plant those in the spring, and as that crown develops, I'm gonna get to letting it, I'm gonna get to talking about the crown. But the ever bearing, what you do is you plant them in the spring and they'll produce for you until the frost in the winter time. So June bearing varieties, the reason we plant them now in the fall time is because on the plugs that we plant and every strawberry plant that there is on earth, there is a crown and the strawberry plant, there's a crown. So what we do now is we plant the strawberry plants in the ground now so that crown develops until fall time and until the winter. And strawberry plants, they really don't go in dormancy. The correct terminology is they acclimate for the, for the weather. So the strawberry plants... 
We plant them in September. They grow the plant and they grow that crown. And we're shooting for, you know, uh, four to five uh, layers of crown because that's for every layer of crown, it's a set of blooms that the strawberry plant could put out. And whenever the strawberry plant puts out blooms in the springtime from that crown, there's one king bloom and four or five. If you get five, four or five blooms, uh, tertiary and uh, secondary and tertiary and uh, quaternary uh, uh, blooms. So the reason, so on the crown with the June bearings is you plant them in the fall, they grow that crown, they grow those layers of crown, and then they go, they acclimate in the wintertime. And on strawberries, once it gets below 20 degrees, then we have to use a floating row cover. So we cover them in the wintertime if it gets below uh, 20 degrees. And then during bloom season, so once the winter goes by, we'll take off the, and spring comes, we'll take off the row covers. And then the strawberries will come back to life. And the same leaves, the same crown, the same plant comes back to life. You know, it comes, it starts uh, taking up nutrients again. And that's when, that's a critical time to actually put on the fertilizer for the blooms and for your fruit. So whenever you, uh, whenever the plants are coming back in the springtime, those crowns, what you have developed in the fall time, they start sending out buds. So they start sending out flowers. So those first layers, so then, so in the springtime, the first layer of bloom sends out the first king bloom, the secondary, tertiary, and quaternary, and maybe a fifth bloom. And then for every week that passes by, those those layers keep sending out shoots or uh, sending out blooms. I'm sorry. And that's why it's very important right now in the fall time to actually get the plants developed and in the soil and get getting ready to strong to develop that crown. Because if you don't develop that crown now in the springtime, you're never going to have any type of crop. So these are for June bearing varieties. And for ever bearing varieties, what you do is you plant them in the springtime. And as that crown develops on the strawberry plants, they send out shoots immediately. And on the June bearing varieties, the the crown acclimates and it sends out the, the blooms whenever it comes out of uh, out of the winter. So, and on ever bearing varieties, if you have them for eight month period, they're gonna out yield the June bearing varieties. But for us, since we're in Southwest Missouri and in the Midwest, our summers are just too hot for us to grow ever June bearing varieties or to grow ever bearing varieties. I'm sorry. And that's why we grow the June bearing varieties. And the variety we're planting, we planted now, it's uh, the variety is called Chandler. It's a really big, nice, juicy uh, berry, and it's really good for you pick farms and farmers markets because the fruit could still be pinkish reddish and still be really sweet and still good, and you you could be able to sell that product uh, or the strawberry. So now t you guys just kind of heard all those terminology and the different types, and now the there's two. The, the most important part of strawberry production on a commercial level or a farmer's market level is your fertilizer program. And this is what a lot of people don't, you know, they lack on. And for us, I was talking to Bill McNitt, and a, a, a acre of strawberries requires seven pounds of actual nitrogen per acre per week right after transplant. So we, uh, we planted, we started planting on Monday, so that means next Monday, I'm going to be putting seven pounds of actual uh, nitrogen or, or a, 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 like, a, like a triple 20 or something, mainly just the urea because urea is high in nitrogen. Oh, I had to move out of the way there because they are, they're still planting there and Isaac came back from school. And anyways, so you want to put on seven pounds of nitrogen per acre so you could develop in the, that crown in the fall time. And then come springtime, whenever you're, you're, you're ready to go and uh, the plants are, you know, they got out of dormancy or they got out of acclimating and they're ready to go, then it's very important to put on that fertilizer so the fruit itself has enough power and energy to actually bloom and set, off, set on a nice looking fruit. So that's part of the fertilizer program. And one thing that a lot of farmers, you know, they, they I have a lot of contradictory uh, or arguments with different farmers about using compost instead of synthetic fertilizer and I mean I'm a very open-minded person I'm open to both ideas of organic and non-organic but the only downfall in strawberry production about the organic part of it is that if you're using some type of compost or um, manure or anything like that only about 50 to 60 percent of the actual available nutrients in compost or manure is available to the first year and the rest of it is available the next year so if you're growing strawberries you got to take in consideration when using a, a, a compost or an organic form 
a fertilizer of um, to, to actually put it on. So whenever we uh, we're gonna probably we're gonna use synthetic fertilizers here. So we gotta calculate and put you know seven pounds of synthetic fertilizer because synthetic fertilizer is available instantly. I mean, if you're putting on urea, that seven pounds is instantly available to the plant. And that's the one thing that, you know, whenever you use an organic form, it's not really instant. It takes longer time to break down. So it goes both ways. It could be done both ways. I'm just saying uh, it could be done both ways. And for us on our farm, we're going to, it's my first time growing strawberries. So I'm going to try to do the most of I can. So we're going to be putting on urea and uh, that, because that's, that's an instant form of nitrogen. And that's the best, that's the best form of use that everybody uses in this area. So now I kind of want to hit on the, the different strawberry varieties. Like I mentioned, this variety we're planting here is Chandler's. It's a June bearing variety. And in the grocery stores or commercial farmers out like in California and in Florida, they hardly ever use June bearing varieties because it has a, such, such a short harvest window. And the main variety found in grocery stores nowadays is called Albion. It's a day neutral or ever bearing. And what it does, they plant that in the early spring. And like I mentioned, it, it acts just it's really close to ever bearing so as that crown develops it keeps giving out good shoots and to grow ever bearing strawberries you got to have a perfect climate i mean year round it's got to stay you know in that 65 to 70 degree range it can't get any hotter or colder so because then the plants just get summer so that's why everybody in this area in our area and in the midwest they have to grow june bearings is because you know once June comes and if you guys live in this area you guys know once June and July come there's no way you could grow strawberries because it gets just so hot and then it messes with the with the crown and then if you don't have a crown you're never gonna have a fruit so everything I just told you that I was told you guys there that's pretty much all theory about the crown and stuff and you know it's you without a crown you don't have a crop and a good way to tell you that you don't have a crop is whenever early on the, the plant puts out a bunch of runners and I didn't mention that there's two different growing systems on the on the strawberries. So here you go. So this, we're using plastic culture now, but the other version of growing strawberries is called matted row system. And then that system, you're not using any kind of plastic. You're using straw and you put the straw down to keep as a mulch. And you want those runners because the people, as, the, as you guys know, the strawberry plants give out runners. And in this system, we have to pull out the runners because we don't want those. We want all the energy to go back to the actual strawberry plant, the mother plant. And in the matted row system, what you do is you just have like a, a strip of strawberry plants and you keep the runners and those runners will continue putting out crowns and shoots. And it just continues growing that way until you have like a big old mat of strawberry plants. So a lot of the matted row systems are not very viable nowadays because everybody's used going towards um, this plastic culture system because, I mean, everybody knows weeds are a pain in the butt to control. And if you're not using any kind of herbicide or anything, anything to prevent the weeds from growing, you've lost the battle unless you want to be out here every day pulling weeds. So the matted row system and the plastic culture system, they both work great. It's just whatever floats your boat. For us, we're using the plastic culture system because it's the most effective and most efficient and most profitable and it's gonna work alrighty y'all that's gonna be pretty much it for today I hope you guys uh, learned and understand uh, or you guys understand more about strawberries now so if you guys haven't already go ahead hit that subscribe button like this video if you guys have any questions throughout the video I mean I, and I didn't explain stuff right leave them down below and I want to say thanks for watching up to this point you guys have a good day and we'll see you next time